Welcome to the Invite Health Podcast, where our degreed healthcare professionals are excited to offer you the most important health and wellness information you need to make informed choices about your health. You can learn more about the products discussed in each of these episodes and all that Invite Health has to offer at www.invitehealth.com slash podcast. First time customers can use promo code podcast at checkout for an additional 15% off your first purchase. Let's get started. Hi, welcome to an episode where we're further discussing the benefits of vitamin C, the utility of vitamin C. Uh, Yesterday I did an episode on an overview of vitamin C and I went into some of its utilities such as for the immune system and the absorption of iron from fruits and vegetables, etc. However, today we're going to go further to this. In any event, my name is Jerry Hickey. I'm a nutritional pharmacist. I'm also the scientific director over here at Invite Health. Uh, Yesterday I discussed dosages of vitamin C, how much you should get, the daily value. Um, But I also said that mm, in certain circumstances you really want to get more vitamin C than the recommended daily value. And if you have heart disease, that happens to be one of those instances. So now we're going to spend some time looking at heart disease and vitamin C. So they found out that vitamin C improves endothelial function. That's a very good finding. And this is both in people with heart disease and people with heart failure and smokers and even healthy people. So what's that all about? What's an endothelial function? (laughs) Endothelial cells line many of your tissues. So they line your blood vessel walls and they're kind of like a rug their shoulder to shoulder and it's their job to pump open to push open your blood vessels for instance your heart is pumping blood every three quarters of a second 80 times a minute about 46 million times per year a little over that if these cells don't function well the heart has to pump harder to get the blood to the brain and the legs and your muscles etc well that's destructive That could damage your blood vessels even more if they're not functioning well. And that's also called high blood pressure. So endothelial function is really important. And improving it, we look at something called flow-mediated dilation. Dilation means the blood vessels can pop open appropriately and blood flow is better. So in a meta-analysis, now a meta-analysis is where researchers group together a bunch of like type of studies. They're looking at the same outcomes. In this case, does vitamin C improve circulation? And a meta-analysis, if it's done properly, because they're not always done properly, will tell you if something either works or it doesn't work. So this is a meta-analysis from 2014. It's 44 randomized controlled human clinical trials. Vitamin C improved circulation. It improved endothelial function in patients with diabetes. That's hard to do. Diabetics are prone to stiffened arteries and heart disease. That's why they have a higher risk of stroke and heart attack and Alzheimer's disease and other dementias. I mean, the blood is just not easily getting to where it's supposed to go. So vitamin C supplements improved circulation in diabetics improved circulation in patients with atherosclerosis. Atherosclerosis means they have narrowed arteries. Their arteries, that's, the arteries are the large blood vessels that the heart pumps out oxygen-rich blood through. So that's where blood pressure takes place. Once it's used, once the oxygen is taken out of the blood, then the blood is returned back to the lungs and heart by the veins, which are smaller blood vessels. There's no circulation, excuse me, there's no blood pressure in veins. They work more with valves. So in people with stiffening of the arteries, narrowing of the arteries, hardening of the arteries, you know, there's a buildup of the cholesterol plaque. And let me tell you, that plaque, it's kind of like melted candle wax. You know those bubbles of candle wax when you when when the wax is melting on a candle, uh, it's crispy on the outside and soft on the inside. That's what they're like. And people with that kind of built up a plaque, vitamin C absolutely improved their circulation. It ap- absolutely improved their blood flow. And also in people with congestive heart failure, which is really important. And congestive heart failure, which 
usually is due to the results of a heart attack. Part of the heart has died during a heart attack. And to make up for the missing parts of the heart muscle, the heart expands in volume and it stiffens and it's hard to pump enough blood to meet the patient's needs. So they feel fatigued, it's hard for them to breathe, there's a lot of symptoms. It's a very dangerous situation. When they gave people vitamin C supplements, it improved circulation. That means it's improving the health of people congestive heart failure. And if they gave healthy people 500 milligrams of vitamin C as a supplement every day, it improved endothelial function. So that's a great finding for public health. Now, what about blood pressure? When they look at the level of vitamin C in the blood, not when they're like trying to assess the amount of vitamin C that people get out of grapes and oranges and apples, etc. But when they actually look at the amount of vitamin C in the blood, so that's a true picture of vitamin C uh, consumption. You know, your, your memory can fool you. Like if you tell people, well, I eat blueberries all the time. Yeah, what does that mean? So they have to figure out, well, if he eats blueberries all the time, he or she should be getting this much vitamin C. But mm, that's not really dependable. That's why a lot of food stu uh, uh, studies are kind of broken that the data in the food studies is pretty not good. But when they look at plasma levels of things, that makes it very dependable. So when they look at the blood level, the plasma is the clear part of the blood. The serum is the red part of the blood, the plasma is the clear part. When they look at the plasma levels of vitamin C, there's an inverse relationship with developing high blood pressure. It helps actually helps prevent the onset of high blood pressure in people, which also has a great deal of value for public health. When they analyzed, they did a meta-analysis of 29 randomized controlled human clinical trials. These are, you know, randomized placebo-controlled human clinical trials. Vitamin C supplements improved blood pressure. They lowered high blood pressure. And that was in people with high blood pressure. But also in normotensive people. Like in the general public, giving them a vitamin C supplement, let's say 500 milligrams a day, can lower the top figure in their blood pressure two or three points and the bottom figure one or two points. That's enough to prevent heart disease later on in their life. So it really means something. Now let's talk about stroke. Stroke is nasty. Stroke can uh, rob you of your independence, your mobility. You could wind up in an assisted living home, a nursing home. Nobody wants that. So this is a study in Japan. It's 2,000 people in Japan over a 20-year period. Higher intake of vitamin C, regardless of where I got it from, reduced the risk of suffering with a stroke by 29%. 29% is huge. Strokes are very common. Reducing the risk of a stroke by 29% would be protecting tens of thousands of people from developing a stroke. Now, in England, there was the Epic Norfolk study. And they looked at over 20,000 people for over a 10-year period. Having a high level of vitamin C in your blood, once again, they're looking at the level. They're not depending on people's memories. You know, what do you eat? How do you eat? That fills. That, that's not a good way of getting data for studies. Looking at blood levels of things, that's a good way. That's very dependable. Uh, people with high blood levels of vitamin C had a 42% reduced risk of a stroke. So that's, that's Japan. That's England. Now, here's another one. This is studies from all over the world. It's a meta-analysis of 17 human clinical trials. Higher blood levels of vitamin C reduce the risk of a stroke by 38%. That's powerful. Now, a major cause of stroke and heart disease is type 2 diabetes. Type 2 diabetes is the kind of diabetes you see generally in overweight adults, but unfortunately you're starting to see it in kids too because there's so many obese children today. So this is the AARP, the American Association of Re Retired People, their diet and health study. It's about 232,000 older adults. Taking vitamin C daily reduced the risk of developing diabetes by approximately 10% versus those not taking a supplement. Now, that might not sound like a lot, but diabetes is so incredibly common that reducing the risk of developing diabetes by 10%, just taking a vitamin C supplement once a day, like 200 milligrams, 500 milligrams, reducing your risk 10%, that affects a huge amount of people. Now, we're back to that Epic Norfolk study in uh, England. And this time they're looking at uh, greater than 21,000 people over a 12-year period. 
a high level of vitamin C in the blood plasma, strongly associated with a reduced risk of developing diabetes. So in one study, the AARP diet and health study in older adults, 232,000 people, um, taking a vitamin C supplement reduced the risk. And in the Epic Norfolk study, looking at about 21,000 people over 12 years, uh, high blood levels of vitamin C that was checked repeatedly throughout the study in a plasma strongly associated with a reduced risk of developing diabetes. So now let's talk about the brain. Our brain soaks up vitamin C. I mean, it's unbelievable what our brain does with vitamin C. When you eat a, uh, when you take a supplement of vitamin C, or you eat a lot of foods with vitamin C, like broccoli and spinach and and blueberries and an orange, whatever. The brain, active transport, it literally greedily gobbles up the vitamin C out of the bloodstream. It literally cherry picks it out of the bloodstream because it requires it. It requires it to protect the brain as an antioxidant to reduce inflammation in the brain. So vitamin C is strongly concentrated in our brain and our eyes. I don't know if we'll be able to get to the eyes in this episode, but it's strongly uh, concentrated in the fluids in our eyes. We'll talk about that. So vitamin C is gobbled up from our food and our supplements by our brain. Active transport, it literally cherry picks it out of blood to bring it into the brain. That's how important it is. In Alzheimer's patients, again and again and again, they find that vitamin C levels crash and burn in Alzheimer's patients. Alzheimer's patients have lower levels of vitamin C. But they do find that in Alzheimer's patients with early to mid-stage Alzheimer's, that a higher concentration of vitamin C in the cerebral spinal fluid strongly associated with a slower loss of memory, a slower cognitive decline. So they're actually looking at the spinal fluid. They're actually doing a, I don't know if they're doing a spinal tap or they're imaging this. So they might be using some kind of powerful MRI tool, but they're finding in the fluid of the spine, if there's a higher level of vitamin C, that's strongly correlated with a slower loss of mental function. And uh, a number of population-based studies show that uh, a higher intake of vitamin C, along with vitamin E as supplements, reduces your risk of dementia. So here's one of those studies. This is a noteworthy study. It's from Johns Hopkins Bloomberg School of Public Health. That's down in Baltimore, Maryland. It's in the journal Archives of Neurology, and this is just one of many studies. They're looking at the Cache County study. They're examining data from the Cache County study. That's a large study. It's a population-based study looking at Alzheimer's disease and other dementias. It's about 5,000 residents who were 65 years of age or older, and they looked at them between 1996 and 2000. And uh, it's not just uh, Bloomberg, uh, Johns Hopkins, by the way, Bloomberg School of Public Health. It's other academic research institutions as well. And they found that vitamin E and vitamin E, vitamin C supplements were safe. And used together, they protected the population at large. So this, once again, ramifications for the general population health, reducing their risk of developing Alzheimer's disease. Now, these are relatively safe, non-toxic supplements. I would say they're very safe, non-toxic supplements. See, previous studies show that vitamin C is a powerful antioxidant, anti-inflammatory agent in the brain. That's why the brain gobbles up the vitamin C from your food and from your supplements, because the brain is a super high-energy organ. And, and, and energy, there's always a byproduct of energy called hydrogen peroxide, which can kill brain cells. So you need a lot of vitamin C to protect the brain cells because vitamin C breaks down hydrogen peroxide. So vitamin C protects the brain from the consequences of high energy metabolism. And your neurons in your brain are very sensitive to this oxidative damage, this free radical damage that's that's caused by byproducts that leak out of their cells uh, in metabolism. So vitamin C is really important for the brain. So they found that it, it, so this is the Cache County study. It's about uh, 4,800 residents, uh, 65 years of age or older, followed for X amount of years. 17% of them were taking vitamin C or vitamin E supplements. Another 20% were using multivitamins. Here's what they found. It's, str- it's a strong finding. The research is from uh, um, Johns Hopkins. Use of vitamin C 
and vitamin E supplements in combination reduced the prevalence of Alzheimer's disease by about 78% and reduced the incidence of Alzheimer's disease by about 64%. But you needed the combination of both. However, if you took a multivitamin, or like one of those I formulas, a lot of division formulas incorporate vitamin C now because of the ARITS trial and the ARITS 2 trial, finding that vitamin C helps protect, and certain antioxidants and minerals help protect the eyes from damage as you grow older. If you've got some vitamin C in a multivitamin or an I formula, let's say, and you took a vitamin E supplement, that also reduced your risk of Alzheimer's. So it really meant something. Okay. Um, tomorrow, we're going to talk about vitamin C with um, um, eye disease. We'll talk about vitamin C with the common cold and, and viral infections. And we'll try to get to vitamin C and cancer. So thank you for tuning in to the Invite Health Podcast. You could find all of our episodes for free wherever you listen to your podcast. Or you could go to invitehealth.com. Our, 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 right on the cover page of our website, you just uh, scan down and you'll see an icon for the podcast or go to invitehealth.com forward slash podcast. Please make sure you subscribe. Please leave us a review. And you can also follow us on all those social media things like Twitter and Instagram and Facebook or at Invite Health. We'll see you next time. And thanks for listening. Mm-hmm.